Hi everyone, Marguerite here. Today on my desk is a big collection of postcard art. Collage art done in a vintage style on postcards that get sent through the mail. And these are ones that I have received and some that I have created myself. And what I wanna do is show you a bunch of examples to give you ideas, to inspire you to create postcards and mail them out and share your art with others. So I do a lot of art exchanges and I host those on my um, collaborative website called the Col Collage Art Collective. There, uh, a lot of people come to um, be around others who do collage art, particularly in this vintage style. And then we post our photos and um, share what we've created. I like to do exchanges four times a year through that group because I really think it's important that um, as creatives, we exchange the physical art so that you have a chance to um, send something and to receive something and and have that to keep that collection you know keep keep those pieces in your own collection for your own use so a lot of these cards that I have are from those exchanges here are a bunch in this pile here here's a bunch of cards that were done in previous exchanges and Usually in exchanges, um, there's a theme. So, so for this theme, for example, was planes, trains, and automobiles. Pretty much anything that, um, that was transportation related. Um, so I'm just kind of going quickly through these just to give you an idea of the different kinds of postcards. These ones are all done with the art on the front and then on the back I will show you examples of how um, to create something for the back. So why do I like postcards? I like postcards because postcards have been around for a hundred years or more and they are a concept of having uh, something on the front, something that's interesting to look at and then a note that you write on the back side and mail it. There's no envelope, it's just a single piece of paper that gets sent out. And I love the idea of having something pretty to look at and then having a note on the other side for, you know, for a friend or, or acquaintance or whatever. Um, so they're typically four by six, four inches by six inches. and I like being um, confined to, to that amount of space. Um, what I do for creating postcards is you can take packaging material, for example, from food packaging, cut them down to four by six, and it's a very nice um, weight, postcard weight that you can use. And it's sturdy, you know, for, for collaging on. So that's an example of somewhere of where you can find uh, good substrates to make postcards. So I will show you some other examples of themes that I have done to give you some ideas. So sometimes I come across um, um, stacks of old postcards. These are this was for a stamp show that you know was back. Uh, a couple of years ago and uh, the vendor was going to throw out all of these cards and I asked if I could have them and he said sure and so I like using them as the substrate for creating my postcards on top of here's just an example of a few right so you can always do something like that I also have a stack of these 
old postcards from um, these are Hungarian postcards I got these at scrap which is a place where people can donate old supplies um, or companies can donate extra you know things that they don't need and then teachers and artists can go and pick up stuff really super cheap and with these guys I have a lot of fun with using washi tape and and rubber stamps and just kind of you know do different things it's just mostly little paper scraps rubber stamping washi tape and then just kind of change it up and if I have a whole bunch of these cards usually what I do is I will set a bunch out and kind of do several all at once so that I can um, kind of just play around with different ideas and see what I like. And I will mail them out to people, but I will also keep a couple for myself just so that I have them as a reference so that if I ever want to go back and make more with these, I'll have some samples that I can use to help me, uh, you know, create more. I've done a bunch with ATCs these are this is another swap that i did recently exchange art exchange where you you um, create atcs on a postcard and then the postcards well they get sent in to me and i do the exchanging and then mail back postcards to to others but you could mail this straight out um you know to someone just like this Right, so create your two ATCs, glue them onto a postcard, and then address it and write a little note and send it off. Here are some examples of, of postcards that I've received that I really love. And I use these as inspiration to give me ideas on, on how to create cards myself. Um, this one I really like because it has this block of four stamps and um, I, that's really visually interesting and then it's kind of broken into sections um, with you know things for the background and note on the side and on the other side is is just interesting paper that's it so it's, it's kind of a simple you know concept of just putting down different layers of papers but then this side is is really busy and, and eye-catching. And this is made on a, a file folder, file folder paper. This one is from my friend Vicky. And what's interesting about this one is that this is one piece. It looks like she copied or printed one piece and then added on top of that you know she glued individual pieces and a postage stamp on top so it's kind of layered and for the back all she did was you know write my name and address very large on one side and then wrote me a note on the other side right and here's my stamp there's a few pieces that kind of over are you know ran from one side to the other which makes it interesting so it's not just plain white right this one is from my friend Pamela. This is uh, an example of a postcard that you can do with cutting an image out of a magazine and then adding pieces over the top to kind of make a story. So this one is shorthand and then she cut out pieces of um, text out of, out, of, out of different books and put it together. Here it says Greg shorthand, but then it says, what the hell? Something didn't make sense. And you've got a nice big chunk of shorthand right in the middle. That That's really clever. I like that. Here is a collage that's done leaving a lot of white space. This is a piece of vintage wallpaper and um, a transportation ticket, some, some stamps, text from a book. And this, um, I don't know, how do you call that? Uh, perforated? 
I forgot the name of the the machine that will will make those holes right here my friend Rhonda she just has a postcard with everything that starts with an A with A with the letter A um, which is you know very very clever on the back um, it's uh, gosh it looks like this looks like the an old postcard that has just been painted over on the other side interesting here's a book page and then rubber stamped and two postage stamps my friend Pamela did this one also and on the back side it's it's interesting because she used a few um, older stamps and uh, have a has a bit of text and a little bit of rubber stamping too people like to use these Pantone cards they come in a set of 500 I believe so you can do a lot a lot of, of, of art on these Pantone cards um, what's cool about them is that the color sets the, the theme for the postcard and so you know then afterwards you can turn it over and write a note and send it off and you've got 500 of them <laughs> here's another interesting uh, one this one is from my friend jennifer I, I like when you can you know you turn it and uh, you turn the card over and then you turn it again and you've got your note over here This one on the back, it's a really cool postcard on the front. But on the back, it's two pieces of dictionary book page. And this is um, a part of, of a library, a library book card, I think, or I don't, there's a specific name for those types of types of cards, but borrower's card. So that's a piece of borrower's card that's put uh, for an address label. These are just some more interesting ideas for um, for the back. See, all you really need to do is, well, in this case, my friend Pamela, she just put a piece of washi tape on the top and, and a rubber stamping to delineate the part where the address is and the, the message is, right? Um, she's got some rubber stamping that takes up a large piece and then a very small note so you don't need to write a whole lot on the back of a postcard just put you know something else of interest um and and uh, you know a date and that's about it this one these ones are just photographs right this is a this is a, a photograph These are old postcards and they were sent to me through the mail recently. What my friend Jennifer did was she just put um, kind of vintage postage on the front just to make the card a little bit more interesting. But she sent these through the mail, you know, using regular postage stamp um, stamps on the back. Forever, forever stamps, right? My friend Michelle sent me this one. What's cool about this is that she also used a vintage postcard. This is an old postcard. And then she added this cutout from a magazine and then added this piece of text from a book. So it's really an original postcard and then two elements that she added on. And, and that's, that's it. It's, it's simple and yet it's very effective. Right. And then she's got some bits of washi tape on the left and the right side. A small note because you, there's hardly any room to write anything because this text is already there. And then, you know, enough room for for writing the address on the other side. Here's a here's a postcard that I got from Post Crossing, um, which is a which is a um, it's a website where you can go and sign up to get postcards from anywhere in the world and that, you know, people will send them to you. This is a single, you know, image, a 
of a bunch of letters. And what's cool about this is that the person took the time to find really cool postage stamps to use, you know, in, in decorating the, the backside. Again, it's a little tiny space for writing an, a note. So you don't, you don't need to write a long letter when you are writing a postcard. The, you know, the, the front and how you decorate the back is, is, is more important than the actual, the little message usually. Um, these ones are interesting because they were mailed to me in the cellophane my friend Pamela she she sent this to me she created the postcard slipped it in the cellophane and then put the stamp on top so it's on the cellophane and I did not want to take it out when I received it because you know the stamp is there so I just kept it in there same with this one this one the um, Christmas tree is kind of loose inside the cellophane and there are more pieces of art underneath these postage stamps. So I left everything in here as is. It's kind of interesting. Right, so I hope this has given you some ideas of what you can do for creating your own collage art on postcards. Um, I wanted to mention again that I have these exchanges four times a year. You can find them at the Collage Art Collective. The link is going to be in the description box below. And in addition to those exchanges, um, I there is a, a group, a circle within the Collage Art Collective of people who want to exchange mail art and... Um, and also sometimes ephemera and things like that, but mostly mostly mail art. So if you're interested in adding your name and address there, um, please do so. You can also find plenty of people to exchange postcard art with. They will be happy to receive yours. Um, we have a new art exchange coming up in October. If you would like to be notified about that, you can subscribe to my channel here. I will put out a video um, regarding that exchange. You can also sign up for my newsletter and I will send an email when we are ready to go to start the next exchange. Thanks for watching.